The political division in the United States is at a level almost worse than any other time prior. The economy is in shambles, inflation is out of control, the border is being held wide open by an overtly corrupt regime, and we the people are caught in the middle of this, and much more, as intellectually disingenuous puppeteers misinform neighbors and loved ones to keep us at each other's throats instead of focusing on the real problem. And what has Hollywood decided to do? Attempt to profit off of our suffering, of course. Civil war takes place in a possibly near future of the United States, which devolved into hot conflict. The primary forces at war are the Loyalist states and Western forces comprised of the currently unbelievable fusion of California and Texas. In this conflict, we follow a group of journalists. Lee, played by Kirsten Dunst, looks like Lauren Southern if she became a hardcore alcoholic. Joel, a sociopath who practically gets off to the death and suffering of others. Jesse is a young and aspiring journalist. And lastly, Thufir Howitt, for some reason. In in the aftermath of a suicide bombing in Brooklyn, Lee and Joel meet Sammy in a hotel later that night and state that they are going to Washington, D.C. to interview the president. Sammy tags along because he wants to reach Charlottesville, I'll discuss that later, and Joel convinces Jesse she can join them. In their travels, the group experiences chaos as the Western forces march on the Capitol in an attempt to end the Second Civil War. That's it? No full summary? You didn't like this, did you, Albie? Not a chance. There just isn't much to discuss. My relationship with A24 Studios is rocky, to say the least. Most of what they put out is bombastic crap. Sure, A24 gives the freedom necessary to work without creatives feeling suffocated, but that leads to egos going unchecked, as I've said before. And Civil War is a perfect example of this, though I do think the studio got involved, and I'll explain in a moment. First, let me state what I actually enjoyed. The cinematography is is solid. Intimate scenes are tense, specifically the one with Jesse Plemons as a loyalist which gave off Tarantino vibes, while large-scale scenes never betray the scope of the budget. The CGI, while a bit more obvious in certain scenes, is used sparingly instead of as a crutch like most modern films. Lastly, the cast give good performances given how little material they have to work with, whether it's Wagner Mora's spontaneous schadenfreude or Kirsten Dunst's perfection of resting bitch face. Now it's all downhill from here. First, this movie acts as a warning of things that may come to pass. Usually, when a movie has a message to discuss, legitimate arguments from both sides are presented for the audience to ponder. Civil War does not do this. Instead, it shamefully squeaks out a few one-sided concerns as it takes a decidedly biased stance under a facade of neutrality. I think this is where A24 stepped in, forcing the movie to appeal to broader audiences for fear of box office failure, which seems to be the case. Early in the film, Lee has flashbacks to haunting moments that she's experienced. One such case, presumably in Africa, is a man attacked, stuffed in a tire, and turned into Haitian barbecue. Adding to this, the Western forces are a union of California and Texas, which, if you don't know anything about American politics right now, couldn't be further from possible. It is also suggested that the New York Times collapsed. These and more examples are shallow attempts to hide the movies by Bias. This is why so many leftists are angry Civil War doesn't go far enough, as the stance taken isn't overtly stated, which reveals how little they understand, as the bias is clear but subtle. In the movie, the president took a third term, dissolved the FBI, follows the Pledge of Allegiance, and believes in God. There is even a big beautiful wall surrounding DC. Make no mistake. He's implied to be Trump. And I lost track of the number of times Charlottesville was brought up. Remember Charlottesville? Pepper's Farm remembers. Oh, and let's not forget how death is handled so differently depending on your allegiance. The Loyalist forces are executed without ceremony. In fact, there's a moment where the substitute for the Boogaloo Boys mulch some Loyalists with a mounted 50 cal. It matters because Civil War presents almost everyone as though they're united against a common foe at the end of the war because different ideas are never discussed. It's like watching the last 15 minutes of Saving Private Ryan from the perspective of civilians. All the detail and world building in Lead of the Climax is ignored to present a shallow story with no real message behind its sole purpose, which is cashing in on the civil discourse of today. What was the reason for the president remaining in office for a third term? Was he voted in by popular demand, or did he subvert the Constitution? Here is the official map for the film. There 
There are four factions. What was the reasoning for their secessions? Do they each have an economy? If the loyalist states still operate on the US dollar, how did the value of the dollar collapse? And if the economy is in shambles, how are entire towns living in peace and operating as normal when $300 can only purchase a ham sandwich? I have so many questions about how things devolved into what the film portrays, but answers were either never intended or outright redacted. Did I mention these people are laughably stupid? They thrust themselves into dangerous situations as though they won't be harmed, like that group of cyclists who were murdered in Tajikistan because they thought all humans are good. Two of their friends drive up on them on a two-lane road as they approach Charlottesville, and the group messes around with switching vehicles mid-drive. They were nearly run off the road by an APC just a moment ago. Why continue to risk this? The very next scene, they pull up on loyalists dumping bodies into a mass grave. Jesse and one of the extras are captured, and how do Lee and Joel think to save them? They'll just walk up and say hello! That couldn't possibly result in the two extras and Sammy being killed. No, not at all. Not one of these retards tries to stop Sammy from bleeding out in the back of the SUV, by the way. Then again, this might not be out of character for Lee, as people writhed around in agony after the opening bombing, Lee just walked around taking pictures and didn't offer to help anyone. Lee is so jaded you'd think her day job was drowning puppies. Sure, she becomes protective of Jesse by the end of the film, but that's only after she's treated Jesse and the others like crap the entire time. Joel is a loudmouth moron who likes to get drunk and only brings Jesse along because he wants to bang her. Jesse begins innocent enough before the shell shock of his adventure practically kills her emotions and turns her into a journalistic terminator by the end. She's the reason Lee dies in the finale, because the group joins an insertion team that goes after the president. These bumbling morons interrupt a tactical gunfight in the White House, and they were allowed to continue? Jesse does this ridiculous action posing when taking pictures that gets Lee shot because Lee tries to save Jesse. Does Jesse, who looks up to Lee as her hero, do anything to help her? Nope, just leaves her there on the ground. Does Joel, Lee's longtime partner check to see if she's okay? Nah, he follows the team into the Oval Office to get a quote before the team assassinates the president and poses for a picture like he was Gaddafi. The only one worth any sympathy is Sammy, and I still don't understand why the fuck he's here. He tries to talk these idiots out of their suicide mission to DC, but goes along with them anyway. Speaking of which, remember how the film starts in Brooklyn? Sammy wants to go to Charlottesville, but Lee and Joel want to go to DC. This confirms to me that neither Garland nor A24 were interested in saying anything, as the film has an opportunity to have the discussion, but actively avoids it. These morons drove west through Pennsylvania, then south through West Virginia and into Virginia, and meet up with the Western forces, then angrily wonder how they could have possibly missed their opportunity. And I don't know why the movie tries to claim that the trip to DC from Brooklyn is a thousand miles either. Brooklyn to Washington is a quarter of that distance. What, whatever, I'm I'm done with this shit. Civil Snore is a bland, cowardly, and infuriatingly stupid attempt to appease one side of the discourse without trying to make a genuine attempt at meeting in the middle by offering solutions, building bridges, or discussing how things came to pass. It only exists to profit off of the height of an election year with reckless abandon as it adds fuel to a fire allowed to rage out of control. It is a worthless waste of time by a writer director who proves more and more that his solo outings aren't what they're cracked up to be and is best avoided and forgotten. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.